In this video, we're going to learn how to find the error in a Taylor series. Remember in a previous video, we established that we can model a function f of x in terms of an infinite sum of polynomial functions called a Taylor series. But this equal sign right here only holds if we have an infinite number of terms. Because a Taylor series is inherently an approximation, if we have a finite number of terms n, then there's always going to be some error between the model and the actual function. So if we want the two sides of this equation to be equal, then we have to add on our error, which we call the remainder of the series. And this is how the remainder of a Taylor series is expressed. So this reads, the maximum value of the remainder for a Taylor series of n terms is equal to the maximum value of the n plus 1 derivative evaluated at the special value z, divided by n plus 1 factorial times x minus z to the n plus 1 power. This remainder is usually only used when you're trying to find the error in approximating a function value using a Taylor series. This is a pretty complex expression, so we're going to break it down step by step. We're going to first start with this z value here. Remember that a Taylor series is a sum of derivatives and polynomials, and that it's an approximation. Remember that your series is centered at c, but you're trying to find the value at x. So when you extrapolate your approximation and try and get to x, the derivatives and polynomials that you added before might not be enough to account for whatever happens in between x and c. And remember that by adding another value to the series, we're improving its accuracy. So that's why everything is n plus 1, because it's the next neglected term. When you add another term, notice that n plus 1 factorial is a constant, and x minus c to the n plus 1 is also a constant. So the only thing that could change your correction by adding the n plus 1 term is this derivative. And remember, we're trying to find the biggest possible error in the approximation. So that's why we have the maximum value of the derivative, which means the maximum change in the function that could happen as we get from x to c. And finally, this is where the value of z comes from. z is any value between x and c, like so. And again, the reason why this is is because we're trying to find the maximum possible change to the function that could have been made as we get from x to c. So this entire numerator just represents the maximum value of the n plus 1 derivative in the interval c to x or x to c. So we've established that this remainder represents the maximum possible error in the approximation of f of x. So then it logically follows that if this remainder as n goes to infinity goes to 0, then f of x has to equal the Taylor series if the remainder is 0. I also note that while this is rn of x, Remember that whenever we use this, x is a constant. So in reality, the only thing we could change about this remainder is the number of term it is. And another way this could be read is, as we add more terms, the error in the polynomial goes to zero. 